up Relic fans, this is Bugo coming to you from the Relic Head offices in Vancouver, British Columbia. And we are here with Mr. Rob Cunningham, and he is currently the Director of Concept and Visualization at Relic. So, what do you do in your new role? Um, in my new role, I do pretty much what I did in my old role, which was um, I, I run a small visualization team, we call it the Viz team, and uh, it's made up of concept artists, and together we work with the art directors and lead designers and sometimes the executives at Relic to visualize concepts and develop concepts for our games. So these can be anything from landscapes to inspirational paintings to unit designs, level designs, storyboards for cinematic sequences, stuff like that. Great. So can you describe a typical day at work at Relic? A typical day? Um, a typical day would probably involve me uh, taking care of some emails in the morning probably and then uh, I'd probably meet with my team and we talk about the work they're doing and what's coming up next and when they expect to be finished and uh, that kind of administrative stuff and then uh, now I'll probably typically I'll have a meeting or two in the afternoon and uh, you know go through some stuff with people and if I'm lucky I'll do some painting. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your career background? How did you get into Relic? Um, well I'm one of the founders of Relic so uh, there, there was no relic before. Um, I, I was previously doing uh, film illustration, so storyboards and set visualizations for movies, and uh, kind of got into games sort of by accident. I was um, friends with Alex Garden, and he started Relic and joined uh, up with me and, and four other guys, and um, mm -hmm. and we started it that way. So it was, it was kind of I, I never intended to to join the the gaming industry, so it's kind of an accident actually. Hmm. So did you have any mentors growing up in terms of your art style or influences in that sense? Um, kind of. I, I have the standard influences that most people have, you know, like Sid Mead or Craig Mullins or these brilliant painters. But um, to be honest, I think the biggest influence for me was my partner, Aaron Kambitz, who is also one of the founders of Relic, now no longer with Relic, he's independent. But uh, he, he told me a great deal about using computers especially and, and, and how to... Um, use that tool, really, mm -hmm. you know. So can you give us some insight into how you come up with art and direction for your projects at Relic? Um, it's kind of a gut level thing. It's sort of a, it's a kind of an emotional um, exploration of the content, whatever you're, uh, you know, working on. Um, it, 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 it all depends on, on, on what it is that, um, the, what, what's the job often just you know go for a walk with someone or grab a coffee and just you know talk about the, the objective and try and clarify what the intent is and uh, if you can get a good handle on what what the what the intent is then then you're much better equipped to actually knock off uh, images that start articulating that and getting a little closer you know to the mark and once once you're pretty once everyone's pretty happy about where it's going then you can start hammering on some you know good looking comps and some nice digital painting mm -hmm. So when you're creating these digital paintings or comps, what specific software or tools do you prefer? I, I work these days exclusively in Photoshop with my Cintiq mm -hmm. uh, tablet here. So um, it's either it's either digital painting with the Cintiq in Photoshop, or I'm you know with a pencil on a piece of paper. Basically, right. it's, that's pretty much it for me. I don't use any 3D software besides maybe SketchUp. Occasionally, I'll use SketchUp to pre-visualize a 3D um, environment if it's if it's particularly complicated or the perspective is difficult, but generally generally it's just Photoshop hmm. with my Cintiq. Interesting. So how long does it take you to create a quick concept sketch versus a full model? Um, wow, a, a concept sketch can take anywhere from like a minute to, uh, <laughs> to uh, you know, a couple hours. Generally, right. generally I, I don't really work on anything for longer than a couple of hours. I think a couple of hours is maybe three hours or four hours is the longest I've ever spent on a piece of on a, on a single piece of work. Um, I, I guess I'm lucky that way. I, I, I'm kind of, um, I guess, either lazy or easily distracted. But one, <laughs> one way or another, I, I, I prefer to just move quickly and and get on to the next painting. I'm not really a, a, a fine detail type, finishing type artist. Okay. So can you maybe describe for our viewers what projects you've worked on with Relic in the past and what roles you did on those, in case anyone didn't already know? Uh, sure. The, um, when we started Relic, I was the art director of Homeworld, Homeworld 1. Um, and 
I did a lot of the ship designs, worked on the story, directed the voice talent, um, directed all the cinematic sequences for that, um, and the music as well. Paul Ruske did the music and the audio for, for Homeworld. Um, and then I uh, worked on Homeworld 2 uh, in much the same role, did, do, doing the same things. Um, there was uh, there was some develop concept development work on some projects that didn't go anywhere in between that and uh, the next thing, which was Dawn of War. I, I didn't do too much on Dawn of War, just the intro sequence that was um, made by Blur Studios. And, uh, I directed that and uh, worked with Andy on the look of the game a little bit, but that was mostly his deal. And then um, on COH, uh, worked primarily in the story development and cinematic direction. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So which project did you find the most interesting to work on? Um, I, I think I probably have to say Homeworld because it was the first one and, and it was kind of a... Yeah, everything was new and, and, and exciting and there was only a few of us and, and at the same time we were making the game, we were also making the company so right. it had this kind of dual... it was kind of doubly interesting. Like the other projects, it was all just about the game so it was a bit more... Um, focused and limited, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's more exciting when you're not only creating a game but also a, an entire company. So Totally. It's probably probably Homeworld One I'd have to say. Not that the others were <laughs> less interesting, but right. in the context I, I think I'd have to say Homeworld One was probably the most exciting. Hmm. So I mean you've worked on Homeworld, Donald War and Company of Heroes, and they're all pretty different in their art style. So how is it to work with such different art styles and different projects? Um to be honest, I think it's it's um, less for me less an issue of style and uh, more an uh, an issue of um, uh, like treatment or, or delivery um, intent. Like um, Homeworld had this kind of you know very big, colorful, epic sort of uh, quality, and and mm -hmm. you know that had its own sort of challenges and what and whatnot. And the others have sort of different. It, each one is different. Like Company of Heroes, you've got a World War Two setting so you you've got a lot of you're you're in good company i mean a lot of people have done world war 2 content before so you've got kind of you've got creative challenges there you don't want to you you want to you want it to look like something but not too much like it otherwise you're ripping them off and so on you know so right. um <laughs> company of heroes my favorite cutscene in that i'd say i'd say is probably the one that there were there were more interesting and more difficult cutscenes, but I think the one that I liked the most was the uh, one at the end of Mission Three, where the MG crew set up an MG emplacement and mow down a, a bunch of Germans trying to retreat, and and uh, all the audio kind of cuts away, and the, and the music sort of carries the scene. And I think the reason I liked it the best was was because um, at the end of the scene there, this the, the the loader next to the MG, he doesn't have any lines, but he kind of looks really disturbed at the. This guy has just murdered all these Germans, and this this one dude, and his his CEO is telling him off. But the other guy is just kind of looking away, like you know, what what's going on here? <laughs> this is kind of this moment where it kind of it seemed to sort of transcend uh, a little bit, and actually felt kind of dramatic and, mm -hmm. and very cool. I think awesome. I like that one the most. Hmm. So across all Relic games, which was your favorite unit? My favorite unit. Yes. Like vehicle or whatever. Yeah, unit or infantry unit or character. Um, that's a tough question. There's been a lot. <laughs> of, to pick of, from. There's, there, yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of neat ones. You know, I think I have to say that my favorite was the um, Kushan destroyer from Homeworld One. Mm. I, I like that one the most. I think. How would you say your personal style has evolved during your time at Relic? I would say that my personal style has probably gotten messier and quicker. <laughs> it's uh, it's um. I was a lot more careful at the beginning, and, and now I think I'm, I, I move a lot quicker and uh, don't worry so much. Mm -hmm. So it's become a lot looser and a lot more sort of um, gestural, I think. Right. But but uh, not like abstract or anything. You know. mm 